Hey everyone, welcome to this Windows channel and here it is. We have build 10,122, 10122 of Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview and it's been available since yesterday, May the 20th and I've installed it yesterday. First observations on the install, uh, install process um, is basically everything went well except for a blue screen at the install so that's a little scary I still don't understand why there's blue screens at the install as we're getting so close to uh, an apparent release date of late July and uh, you know just to say uh, late July is uh, only two months away that's 60 days or a little more now the install recovered from it and actually worked well afterwards so it didn't seem to actually cause any problems but it's still weird to have a install problem here now if you want to have the uh, pleasure of testing 10,122 remember you have to be in the fast lane in your Windows update it's not available yet to the slow lane so that means that when you can't get it in the slow lane of updates it means it's not available in the image files so you can't download it as an image unfortunately uh, it updates from the Windows install the previous version which was 10,074 so we uh, did a big jump here to 10,122 um, so make sure that uh, you are in the fast lane in the advanced option of the uh, updates to get it so the first observations that I have, uh, there are a few glitches. Uh, first of all, there's the tablet mode that I've uh, actually, you know, when you go to the start menu, if you look at my start menu, this is the tablet start menu. It should actually be the desktop start menu because I'm using a laptop. And actually what happened is when I s installed it, the first time I load my, my computer, I just start my computer, what happens is I had the desktop start with the left panel which is okay and the start menu did not take the full screen because it does not take full screen anymore in desktop mode they've removed the possibility to expand it why because apparently a lot of people were getting confused that when they expanded the start menu they thought they went to the um, touch mode or the tablet mode which was not the case most of the time so um, they've removed that possibility now I went to the option here and clicked tablet mode which brought me this which is nice you know you got the starts menu with apps you've got a little hamburger menu on the upper left corner to get your um, start menu bar if you want on the left side which is not too bad also, one of the things that happens in the tablet mode is that the icons space out a little more so that it's easier to touch. But the problem is when I came back to regular mode, uh, it gives me a desktop and everything, but uh, it stayed, the menu stayed in tablet mode full screen with the hamburger menu. As normally you should have a smaller menu with that left panel of all your apps and recent or most used apps and so on. So that's kind of weird. Uh, a little glitch here, but I guess this will going to be fixed as we get into the uh, official version, I hope. Um, one word of caution, if you've got an AMD graphics card or graphics GPU in your machine, one of the things that you have to know is that there's an incompatibility with Microsoft Edge or Project Spartan and these GPUs which means that um, Microsoft Edge browser does actually have a lot of problems it's gonna freeze it's gonna give you error messages and so on some people say if you are using Edge if you are using Project Spartan as your main browser wait for the next build maybe as it's not working very well for now or wait at least for a few updates <coughs> sorry now I have a Intel G3 
graphics GPU here on my machine, so it doesn't do that in Spartan. And talking about Microsoft Edge, that's still called Project Spartan, by the way. Uh, one of the interesting things that I tried is typing Edge here in the search, and it does bring me to Project Spartan. So, and you see the link to Microsoft Edge is there, but it's still called Project Spartan. They've added tabs, finally, to uh, Microsoft Edge, which is nice, with this top sites on the top and stuff like that that I don't really care about, but uh, this is what they add. I hope you can, uh, you probably can customize these if you want. Uh, I see there's little, you know, X's on the upper right corner of each one. So probably there's a way to, uh, you know, customize this. But uh, Microsoft Edge is still in its infancy. So for the rest, it doesn't look much different from uh, previous versions. Uh, so I'm not really seeing any differences here in the Microsoft Edge browser for now. No major changes on the desktop or the file explorer from what I've seen. Pretty much everything seems to be pretty much the same. Uh, I'd like to see more contrast here. I don't really like the fact that we have a very white background with these um, you know, options. I hope this is going to change. Uh, maybe do some s more contrast. Uh, maybe you know, remove that white and put something else. Uh, it's not particularly nice. I don't find it very, very uh, nice personally. Um, what else? Well, you know, st still some tweaks here on the uh, notifications uh, tab. Unfortunately, a, a little too much, un you know, stuff that's not very useful here on the notifications. You know, stuff like don't forget to uh, a restart is scheduled at and stuff like that. I don't care. You know, these are things that I don't want to have. I think notifications needs to be a little more precise on uh, really interesting stuff. Uh, that's really, really not that great right now, uh, hopefully. And, you know, I get these little pop-ups all the time of different things that aren't very cool, I'd say, about that. Hope they fix it and make it a little better. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, there are a few glitches. If you have a tablet, tablet mode, I, apparently when you... Uh, you are changing the orientation of your tablet, um, you know, from um, <coughs> to to put it, for example, to landscape mode or stuff like that. Apparently, the windows don't actually follow. So instead of having, you know, a full screen experience, you end up with something that's uh, like a little window like this in a corner, and you have to actually you take it and make it full screen yourself which is kind of weird, so there's kind of some glitches. Uh, a lot of people with tablets seem to say there are glitches there, uh, including on um, Surface. Um, something new probably that's going to be implemented as we look through the settings menu. I've seen that here in the accounts you actually have family and other users that appear that wasn't there. That's interesting. That means that there's probably going to be, you know, like some kind of filtering possible, um, something that would let you uh, really choose what type of content you know your children can see and so on. Uh, that looks interesting. So you'll see here you had add a family member and you know and add users and stuff. So I think that uh, that looks interesting. Uh, for that. There were updates for uh, the uh, mail calendar and the uh, different MSN apps which are pretty much now all universal uh, so the weather app and so on everything is universal so it means that it looks the same on you know a phone, a tablet, a PC uh, everything's been unified in such a way that um, it will look pretty much the same everywhere so that's not too bad actually um, they seem to be working well. Most of the universal apps that I've tried look nice. Uh, that's for sure. And the fact that they're unified is cool because it means that you know everywhere you use them, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the store, even though the icons, some icons have changed or some uh, tiles have changed, uh, like the 
Microsoft Store, which is a big blue tile now, uh, really shows you the Microsoft Store. In previous builds, uh, sometimes we had some difficulty actually getting to uh, this, uh, uh, finding the tile, basically. Um, still 3D effects on some tiles. They're a little different. Uh, they they change something because the 3D effect is not the same as it was before. So there's a few changes here. The store itself doesn't seem to have changed anything. So uh, for now we're still in the same store look that we've had in previous uh, builds, uh, which is nice. But uh, I think there's still you know place for improvement there. That's for sure. Uh, music, video, and photos app, the Xbox app, are all pretty much the same. They're universal, so it means that they work pretty much the same everywhere. Uh, some utilities, they've changed the utilities a little bit. And, uh, you know, if you take, for example, calculator, um, you notice that, they, that it looks more like a phone app than a PC app. And it's kind of weird, you know. If you look at this, it's really not appealing. I hope they're going to improve this because this is horrible, actually. And um, on some tablets and PCs where they become full screen, uh, they, they're even more horrible. So I hope these will get better. Still pretty much the same settings everywhere. I've uh, gone through uh, most of the options here, system settings and so on. Everything is pretty much uh, at its, you know, the same space that it was before. The same settings everywhere. That's pretty... Uh, you know, nothing really changed there. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to see how little differences there are between builds, actually, right now. And I think they're really working hard on bug fixes, but that's another problem, is that there are glitches. I actually had uh, the install glitch, but I also have the start menu glitch that my computer stays in tablet mode start instead of bringing me desktop, even if I'm not in tablet mode. Another thing that's... Uh, been plaguing me a little bit is that my display driver has crashed twice since this morning. Now it doesn't change anything for what I do but it still crashes and I did not have any display adapter crashes before this build so it seems they're tweaking something and problems arise from another spot which tends to make me think that um, we might see a Windows 10 um, release later than late July maybe. One interesting thing though is the default apps. When you click for example a music file it will open the default uh, music app. A JPEG will open the default picture app. In this build they've changed something. When you install a new software, say you install Photoshop, say you install uh, Picasa. These programs change the defaults. So when you click a picture, they want to be the default app. Well, they've actually added something that when you install a new app or a new piece of software that wants to take control of everything, a pop-up will say, um, look, I've got my settings changed. Do you want, please choose the app that you want by default. So if it's Photoshop, then you'll just have to confirm that, yeah, yeah, it's cool. That's what I want. Photoshop will be my default app. And then it's going to, you know, it's going to stop asking. But I think that's nice because so many apps and so many programs we install actually take control and you really, you know, get a little, people really, you know, get messed up here because what happens is something else takes control and they're, they're totally lost and they don't, they don't understand. So I think this is nice because it's going to tell you something else took a control of this or this file format, for example, and it's going to ask you, which one do you want for default? And that's, that's, that's I think, interesting. Apart from that, uh, apart from the few glitches that I've talked about, most of the system does seem pretty stable, though. I did not have blue screens, no freezes. 
Um, I've seen a few reports of people saying that they've got a few freezes in the file explorer with especially when they go in the pictures folder and have miniatures of images uh, and I've seen that in a few places and I've actually seen that also uh, from Paul Tarot on his Tarot.com website where he f um, he he's tried it and uh, he reports that he's got that problem so it's kind of uh, iffy and it depends probably on the the machine the drivers you have uh, it does seem that different people have different types of problems so uh, it's kind of weird uh, to see that you know as we're evolving instead of <laughs> getting uh, really better it does have glitches and it's even more interesting here because I remember when I used to get builds of Windows 7 and Windows 8 there seems to be more glitches on Windows 10 than in previous builds which is intriguing because I've uh, rarely had so much problems in the past builds so uh, hopefully Microsoft will fix that and we'll have a good Windows 10 when it comes out and um, hopefully things are going to be fixed so that's pretty much what I have to say where we are at in this Windows 10 builds and um, if you've installed it or if you want to install it you have to go from build 10074 put your computer in fast mode or fast ring and uh, go into Windows Update and you'll get the uh, 10,122. If you enjoy our videos, why not subscribe to our channel? You'll be informed when new videos are online. If you have any comments, questions, maybe something you'd like us to talk about, something we can help you with in Windows, let us know. We'll try to post a video online or answer your questions. So thanks for watching.